just want to say I'm having a rough morning. I may run away from the screen and come back, but um, I'll just do it. Uh -huh. No problem. Um, so, Michelle, we're recording, and if you could just also make that announcement, because the chair needs to announce that, that we're recording the meeting. Thank you. Absolutely, yes. So I am opening the January 4th meeting, calling to order the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee at 9.01 a.m., and this meeting is being recorded. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. And I'm going to do a sound check for members of GOL, and then I will pass it over to Lynn to open the council meeting and do a sound check for other counselors. So, and also um, for GOL members, I have to leave at about 1125 sharp. So when we do the sound check, if you could just give your timing for today, what time you need to be out of here by, that would be great. Starting with you, Mandy. Um, I'm present and I can stay till 1120 or so. Okay, great. Jennifer. I'm present and I can also stay till 1120. Great. Pat. I'm present and also can stay until 1120. Okay. And Anika. Uh, present and I can stay until 1120. Okay, excellent. Um, so I'm going to pass it over now to Lynn to call to order the council meeting. Given that we have a quorum of the council present, I'm going to call the council meeting to order. It is only for the purposes of discussing the goal. And when we are finished with that, the council will adjourn. Uh, I also want to note that residents can also view this meeting on Amherst Media, who is with us today. Uh, so let me do a check with those that are present. Anna Devlin Gothier. Good morning, I can hear you. Um, Pam Rooney. Here. Uh, Kath, uh, Kathy Shane. Here. Andy Steinberg. Present. And I think that's all of the counselors. And Lynn Griesmer is present. Uh, Lynn and Michelle, I just wanted to note quickly that um, according to the emails that I've received from counselors, we, we might be expecting one or two more a little bit later. So I'll just keep an eye out for those and we'll confirm that they can hear us and we can hear them when they join. That sounds great. And Athena, I just received a text message from Alicia. She needs um, uh, the link. Is it possible? I, I just, if so we could get started. Would you be able to send her that? Sure thing. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, excellent. So we are going to begin this meeting as a committee of the whole, as Lynn said, to continue our discussion on the town manager goals. Um, I'm going to begin with a public comment period. And then um, it looks like we have, I, I tried to take a look and see how many items we still had that we hadn't resolved. Um, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven or eight items. So um, I said this earlier, but I don't think it was recorded that I think in order to get to the other items that we have to get to today, we have about an hour to spend on this. So for each item, as we go through, I'll be just watching um, the clock in terms of our discussion. So I'm going to begin by calling a public comment period, and I will read the public comment statement. <clears throat> public comments on matters within the jurisdiction of GOL can now be made. Residents are welcome to express their views uh, for up to three minutes, um, depending on the number of speakers. I may ask that we limit that to two minutes today. Uh, based upon, uh, of course, the members who want to speak, GOL will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment, uh, but we'll be listening carefully. And if you'd like to participate, please go ahead and raise your hand now. Okay, great. It looks like we have two people that would like to make public comment, and we will begin with Matt Holloway. Welcome, Matt. Hi, good morning, Michelle. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, good morning. My name is Matt Holloway. I live with my wife, Emily, and our two young sons at 63 Maplewood Drive in Amherst. 
Um, I'm a co-chair of the Cultural Council and a resident member of the Finance Committee. We lived in Namers since 2019. Um, and in the first couple of weeks after moving to town, I was having coffee with a friend and a longtime resident. And my wife was pregnant with our first child. And my friend said, um, she, she made an alarming statement to me. She said, Amherst is not a great town for kids right now. We're old and getting older. Um, and she said it in a joking fashion, you know, but uh, she was also making a valid point. Um, and, you know, that's kind of been reinforced uh, to me in, my, in our experiences. This year, um, as a member of the Finance Committee, I made a review of elementary school enrollment data over the past uh, two or three decades. And it was very alarming, uh, you know, talking about like a, a you know, 100%, a 50% decline in the um, in the enrollment. Um, and, you know, while there are many factors that can explain something like that, uh, there's no question that one one is, um, there's, uh, you know, an actual decline in the number of young children living in town. Um, so, you know, having reviewed the town manager's goals, um, I just want to say, I, you know, I, I applaud uh, the work that's being done to address the proportion of owner-occupied versus renter-occupied homes in town um, through regulatory controls. I think that's certainly a factor in terms of housing affordability for, for young families, no question. Um, and I think that same issue though, of you know, sort of this demographic shift um, can and must be addressed from the other side as well. Uh, one that actively promotes the town as a place where people uh, and particularly you know, young families want to occupy their homes and, and feel like it's a vibrant community for them to do so. Um, and so looking at the uh, proposed goals, the most recent you know, proposed goals that, was up that, that, that have been posted, I thought you know, that the economic vitality and housing affordability sections might be areas where um, we could we could find space to include you know this concept of of you know making the town a more appealing place for families to live and to move to um, you know one under economic vitality would involve sort of studying and recommending initiatives that promoted um, a more child and family friendly family friendly town culture um, you know including recreational childcare and community building options. Uh, with the goal of making the town more attractive to young families and first-time home buyers. Um, and one, you know, I think one sort of cost-neutral approach to that would just be to start the dialogue, uh, you know, through a survey of young families or through other explicit outreach means that that just sort of gather the input of, you know, what do folks value and, and what, what would folks like to see? Um, and so I think my, my suggestion there would just be, you know, sort of to get recommendations. You know, I realize there's going to be a price tag attached to any initiative and and I'm not, you know, kind of advocating for any new spending this year on this topic, other than uh, recommendations for future years uh, expenditure, and and not vast expenditures either. I think um, the other area that I would just suggest, you know, I've seen really great work uh, out of this group, and I want to thank you all very much for your dedication and your and your time on the topic. Um, uh, I would I would suggest that we explore state and federal grant opportunities uh, and other programs. Um, for first-time homebuyer workshops, borrower assistance programs, and, and other things that, you know, kind of create avenues for first-time home ownership um, in, in town. Uh, you know, there is HUD money out there and, and other, other federal grants, and, you know, I don't know the details, but I do think that, you know, doing some explicit research on those could, you know, could help promote uh, first-time home ownership. Thanks for your time. Thanks again very much for your service, everybody. I really, I really appreciate it, Joe. Thank you very much, Matt. Thanks for joining us. And Lynn, I see your hand is raised and Alicia has uh, joined. Yes. Um, Alicia, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Thanks, Michelle. Alicia, and welcome. Thank you. Okay, so our next public comment, Darcy. Welcome, Darcy. Hi. Uh, good morning. My name is Darcy Dumont, and I live in South Amherst. Um, I think the council received yesterday my recommendations for language in the town manager climate action goals. Um, this comment is just to remind you that a broad swath of the residents in Amherst want the Haller bylaw proposal implemented, um, and that it is included in the CARP actions as the, as the exact action that is being proposed. So the CARP strategy action TI 2.4 states that the town should, quote, implement a townwide curbside composting program for residential and commercial customers, ensure that service is inclusive in large apartment complexes through agreements with owners and property managers, 
create or contract with a compost processing facility in the region to reuse the compost generated locally for local gardens, farms, et cetera. And lastly, contract with waste haulers to increase efficiency, expand the scope of services office offered, and reduce vehicle emissions from trash and recycling collection in Amherst neighborhoods. You can use the word implementation without it being unreasonable. For example, you can state, quote, implement after adoption, unquote, and you can state, quote, start implementation, unquote, so that it's clear that it doesn't mean full implementation with every last detail taken care of. Um, on the climate action goals, uh, the point is that we have to be making progress every year. We can't put off action from year to year if we're going to meet our 2025 and 2030 goals. Um, and uh, lastly, I would very much encourage the town to take more use of its incredible resources of free volunteer resident ex expertise, knowledge, and time. Um, it is already doing some of that. For example, Dwayne Breger being the chair of the Solar Bylaw Committee. He's got amazing expertise. The, the ECAC is full of people with tons of expertise that we could use. Um, and we hope that during this budget season, we will be able to convince the town to hire staff to do the work necessary to implement the climate action goals as Northampton is doing, it appears the mayor is poised to make an announcement on that imminently. So thank you very much. And thank you for your time and your work on this. I, it's so important. Thank you, Darcy. Thanks for joining us. Okay, this is a public comment period for anyone who may be in the attendees that did not hear me make that announcement. Um, we're discussing the town manager goals. Um, and we have uh, Dee Shabazz in the audience who would like to make public comment. <clears throat> Hello, is everyone Hi. here? Yep. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much, Dee Shabazz, um, a resident of Chapel Road here in Amherst. Um, and also on the CSSJC committee, I am a co-chair. I just want to speak to a concern that I have in much of the discussion with the GOL and the town council concerning the town manager's goals. It seems to me that the uh, CSWG goals that were laid out last year based in research, based in um, forums held uh, to get input from the community are now being marginalized in ways that will set back all of the great work this town has taken, including creating two new departments, DEI and CRESS. One of the aspects of this is that the anti-racist training uh, focused on the APD is somehow um, seen as targeting the police. Yet, if we go back to the two reports, A and B of the CSWG, and I'm sure you have all read it exhaustively, there are uh, sections in which again, based in research and forums held in this community, that those recommendations were taken up as a part of the ongoing anti-racist work that this town has committed. And so it is not something that came about recently due to the July 5th incident, let's just call it out. However, the work within anti-racism training is ongoing. It is, has been found to be more effective because it changes a culture. 
When we think of what policing is within the United States that is rooted in the control of black bodies and slavery, that legacy continues even in the best of departments. And I, I will say that we have, you know, probably one of the better departments in the state of Massachusetts. That does not mean it cannot be improved. And instead of leading on this issue, we want to have this conversation about we are targeting somehow the police. It is policing in general that has racist roots. And here we are leading with DEI and CRESS and why not continue with the recommendations of the CSWG? After all, that's what we committed to last year. So I, I would like the town council to take that up and not see it as somehow targeting our police force but to see it as our police force leading and becoming more anti-racist and changing a culture that is systemic. So thank you for your work. And that is what I have to share today. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thanks, Dee. Thank you for joining us. Um, and we have... Two more public commenters, uh, Vera. Welcome, Vera. Hi, um, I just wanted to refer back to the uh, town manager goals. Um, under management goals, um, personnel management, um, the I, the objective um, number five, foster a proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments, working first with the public safety department, CRESS, fire, and EMS, and police. So given the recent articles um, speaking to how police officers are feeling assailed in this community, um, and given the coverage around meetings with town council members and the police um, that have not been publicly shared or announced or reported about you know who attended and what topics were covered um, we can gather from the conversations um, and discussions at town council meetings that there's a lot of effort here to um, put the police last. Um, and I just want to echo the point that um, the last public commenter, D. Shabazz, made. Um, you know, CRESS, FIRE, and EMS, they don't have a gun. They don't come armed when they meet and encounter the public. Um, the police have an ability to kill people and to detain people and to rob people of their rights. So um, I just want to offer my public comments this morning to note that um, I see what's, what it is going on and I hope to um, get more of a fuller report um, about these meetings that took place in, at the police station with town counselors. Thank you, bye-bye. Thanks for joining us, Vera. Uh, Brianna. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to emphasize how vital it is to create an anti-racist culture at the Amherst Police Department. Not training, but an actively anti-racist culture. I'm not here to debate what happened on July 5th, but to remind you how intimately the Amherst Police Department interacts with our community our friends, our family, and our loved ones. Yes, the CSWG created CRESS with the intention of a safety service centered around anti-racism, but we also recommended creating an anti-racist culture at the Amherst Police Department because we knew the APD was not going anywhere. This is a need that the community sees as critical, and I'm hoping today and in the future, you all can help provide the police department that support to show up the best way they can for everyone in our community. Thank you. Thanks, Brianna. 
Okay, this is the last call for public comment. And Pat? Welcome, Pat. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, this meeting time is so wrong because I've reached out to some people to show up today, but they couldn't make it. I come from a family of police. My uncle, my cousins are police officers. I do not hate police officers, but I am very frustrated with the town council to try to protect the police, to argue that anti-racist um, training should be all departments. I have news for you guys. The last CSSJ meeting that was held, I requested for APD consultants, contract contractors for the past 10 years, specifically for, for me to review the type of training that police officers are getting in our town. And what I've found out was mostly law enforcement trainings, except for one major local consultant, the Romneys, that provided anti-racist training, okay? So CSSJC are aware that the police need anti-bias training. Why are we debating who come first? To me, what is happening is like a crying baby. When a baby cries, the parent jump to calm them down. When when police officer doesn't like what they what they want, the powerful town councilors go behind the scene to 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 make plans to shut down what Councillor Alicia is trying to do. I would like to remind you guys that CS CS WG, which I was a member of, recommended anti-bias training to the police officer. As a black woman who have lived in this town for 40 years, I have never called police. And I pray that I don't because police are not here to protect me and my family. I'm afraid of them. Okay. And so they do need that training first before any other department. It has <clears throat> nothing to do with July 5th incident. So I'm agreeing with the previous speakers, Dr. Dishabaz, Brianna, and Vera of what they already said. More people would have showed up this morning if, it were, if this meeting were held in the evening. Again, this is about white privilege. I see so many of you being available this morning to hold these meetings. It's not that for some other people. So because this is such an important uh, issue to be included in town manager's um, goals. And then you guys are using your power to just uh, um, disrespect one of the only black, one, one of the black counselors in your team, disrespecting her. And that's not okay. We try to preach for diversity and when people try to run for office, you guys try to you know, bring them down. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Thanks for joining us. Um, and we have one more public comment from Philip. This is the final public comment. Ty, can you hear me? Yes, welcome, Philip. All right, thank you. I just wanted to speak on some concerns that were brought up to me in uh, my various roles in towns as the Human Rights Commission Chair, Co-Chair, and as the Community and Safety and Social Justice Committee member that people have brought up to me. I was away for two weeks um, on vacation and decided not to look at emails, not to look at anything. And so I don't really know what was going on in town until I came back into town. And so people were kind of just, hey, did you hear about this? Hey, did you hear about that? And with that, I think that an experience that I had while I was away is relevant to this conversation of systemic police. And 
biases that they have. I grew up in a town that was predominantly Hispanic in Ontario, California. And there, I, I don't expect much from our police department. Our police department at my home is a very interesting one. But I was hanging out in my hometown at my grandma's house with family members. And we were just out in the front area and just you know, just hanging out, having a good time and a police car rolled up. And then before we knew it, there was about six or seven of them. And we all kind of got stopped on the curb. And a couple of my cousins are affiliates of some local gang members. And so that could have been the reason why could not have been didn't, we weren't doing anything at the time. But either way, I got held up in that lineup too. I got, you know, question got put on the curb got told to sit there whatever else and so I just want us to think about that that may not be every police officer's intention yet these types of stories happen all the time to minoritized groups and people of color and whether or not we want to view it as systemic racism it is when on multiple fronts of different police departments that is occurring throughout our nation. And so for that, I just wanna say that I would love if our town and our police department could potentially not feel victimized, not feel in a way that puts um, them in a bad light and rather view it as an opportunity to lead the efforts of our anti-racism in town and to lead the efforts of being the department of like, hey, you know, we know that we have a systemic problem in the nation and we're not saying that we participate in it or we're a part of it or whatever it is, just that they're leading the town efforts. I think that goes a long way for the story that I just shared with you, that it creates a narrative that, you know, our police department cares about this issue rather than that they don't care about this issue and that our police department is so fragile that if we put them as the first people to do this training, that it's viewed as an attack and that we need to change course in any way. So with that, I just wanna leave that. I also am not understanding why this conversation is happening in the GOL efforts when it's already been voted on in the town council on uh, November 11th. So I just wanna leave that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Thanks for joining us. Um, and the town manager goals will be on Monday's town council meeting agenda. So there will be additional, uh, there will be a, a general public comment as there always is at a town council meeting for folks who weren't able to attend today. <clears throat> so we are going to begin our review. And Mandy, would you uh, be willing to bring up the current draft? Um, Mandy, uh, after our last meeting, Mandy received comments from counselors and has incorporated those comments into the latest draft. Um, Town Manager Bachelman was unable to join us today. He did let me know he had a, another engagement, but um, he has put some questions in here that have been here actually for quite a while. So hopefully everyone's had a chance to read them. Um, so we uh, can begin here with the sort of summary that starts us off, and then we're going to go through item by item. And uh, last GOL meeting for folks who were not here, I think we've already said this, though, we went through and pulled out the items that we're still in debate about. So um, there are we're not going to have to touch on everything. So I'm going to look for hands as we move through this, beginning with this first uh, question that Paul has here. <clears throat> and just to clarify again, so this is a committee of the whole, so the whole council or the councils that are here are having the discussion. Ultimately, GOL will have to make a recommendation on the document. So um, as we go through, I'd like to try to get a sense um, for each of the items where we are so that we can see if we're finding consensus or not on each of these items. Um, so Paul says, how do we address the possibility that the funding needed to achieve the goals may not fit within the budget guidelines? 
Does anyone, would anyone like to comment on that? Uh, yes, I see Pam, Jennifer, Mandy, and Kathy. I'm gonna start with you, Pam. Thanks. Uh, I think regarding this in, in several instances throughout the, the goals, there are opportunities for the town manager to um, assess what it would take to accomplish some of these things. And I think speaking only for myself, I would expect that there would be some effort to project out the cost of implementing some of the goals. That's part of the job. It, it, we need to be presented with um, essentially the ramifications for getting something done. And if it's a several, it, it, there was something in the conservation section, you know, there's something right here that we need to know what it will cost, but it doesn't mean that they should not work on it because it's not somehow fully funded right now. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that um, the town manager understands that, that we, that we are looking for essentially cost estimates for doing some of this work. And that needs to be presented to us so that we can choose to pursue it or not. Thanks, Pam. Jennifer? Um, yes, I agree with Pam. And I, I'm at the point of doing the goals first was so the budget could be set around the goals. And I realize if we said, you know, we want D, the, a new department DEP building, you know, at the end of the year, that can't happen. But that is the point of the exercise is that we, each council has an opportunity to set goals and then the budget is made around that. So it seems, yeah, I guess it's a bit of a dance. You know, we can't ask for something that can't, we can't afford, but we have to ask for what we want, what our priorities are, and then have the budget be built around that. So um, yeah, so that's just what I'm saying. I, if, if we're gonna say, well, we can't set the goals because it may not be in the budget, then that seems to be the whole point of the exercise is to build the budget around the goals. Just, that's it, thank you. Thank you, Mandy. So I don't think Paul's saying that he can't do this. I think he's saying when we set the goals, um, they might not fit within the guidelines that we also vote. Um, and how do you reconcile those two? Um, and so, you know, I think we could change this wording to, and we'll, you know, I, I'm just making stuff up right now, including multi-year plans, and we'll um, inform the town council of the fund, you know, of, of a, of how they could be integrated into budget proposals within the council's budget guidelines or something like that, that, you know, and if they can't, you know, and then add something that, you know, if they can't ask the council what it wants to do, right? Because if we can't fit it in the guidelines, you know, take Jennifer's DEP exam, DPW example that, you know, say we put in the budget in, in these manager goals, build it in a year. Well, that's not gonna fit in the guidelines, right? Um, and so if they can't, I, I think he needs to inform the council why it can't go in there or what would be necessary for us to be able to, for him to be able to meet that goal, how we would fund it. And so I think we can just modify this wording to address his concern somehow. Thank you, Kathy. I just build on what Mandy said. I, I think the, um, some modification of the wording because it says the last phrase mandy is we'll present a budget proposal for funding them as if we can do it in a year um so we need to do we'll estimate resources including and you know taking step forwards in year one or something because it's my overarching comment when I look at these goals is if I were the town manager I would say I can't do it um and if I <laughs> was nearing retirement i said i have to leave because we we're asking for too much in one year and we're not making choices so in terms of resource limits staffing limits funding limits so i think it's just a rewording this um because we're going to be paul is going to have to make some choices and provide us cost estimates on some of these thanks kathy andy 
Yeah, and I deliberately waited to go last uh, or later because I wanted to hear what other people had to say. And I agree with uh, the direction that is just being suggested of rewording the goal um, is uh, or rewording the section in any event, um, because it does, we need to address the reality that we have limited resources and we want the town manager to help us cope with that and um, to allow, um, to provide us information about what the cost and would be and the duration of time necessary to achieve goals so that we can um, then in future years uh, work with that information in order to uh, continue to um, set our priorities appropriately. And uh, so it would uh, be really helpful to get very careful wording that encourages that kind of dynamic process. And uh, I appreciate the prior comments that work in that direction. Thank you, Andy. Um, I have a question about the timeline on the goals for any of the counselors from the first um, session. Have, has, was it ever discussed whether the goals should be longer than one year, should be to cover like a two year period? Um, because it certainly seems to me like we're asking a lot um, in this time frame, um, and then thinking about the town, the the, the budget guidelines. Um, I, I can see where the challenge is. So yes, Mandy. Yes, we've discussed it multiple times. One of the challenges of making it a two year set of goals is that the charter requires us to evaluate the manager on a yearly basis, not on a bi yearly basis. And so it makes the evaluation in that mid year slightly harder. It's not that it can't be done, but um, that that's been one of the challenges. Um, the other challenge is what do you do in an election year? Who who adopts those two years and when do they get adopted? Um, but it has been discussed. Yeah. Okay. Lynn, it sounds you put your hand down. Oh, back up. Okay. <clears throat> Please. I actually um, totally agree with what Mandy Jo just said. And in addition, I think it's very important to couch the goals in any language as making things using words like make progress toward uh, that kind of thing. Uh, because the other thing we ran into it this year uh, is we actually did the town manager's evaluation nine months into a 12 month period. And um, even though there's still things that he has not been able to finish up in this past year, meaning 2022, there's still work in progress. So um, this is something that I think the council needs to address, but it's not going to work now. I do think these goals and the major reason we kept, I'm in support of keeping the themes that we keep is because our progress within the six, the, well, the 12 major goals um, is really continual and multi-year. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, so it looks like Mandy has some language to work with here and we can move on uh, to climate action. Um, so I'll be looking for hands here. We've had um, a reasonable amount of public comment on this. Um, and there are also questions here that Paul has addressed. Um, so looking for hands. <clears throat> Kathy. Um, I, I'm looking at Paul's comment on the side um, and, and Mandy, as a drafter of this on the, are we picking out these three versus something that's already in the work that they're focusing on for CARP? And I think, uh, you know, and when I was looking at the first round of this, I know I was trying to pick from a very long list and Paul's now given us a list of what they're working on. I think we need within climate action to have some specifics, but have some specifics that Paul and the staff think they can do during the year, you know, or make progress on, you know, not necessarily complete. So I'm particularly focused, Michelle, on the where 
Paul said, are we substituting this set for the things that are already under the way from CARP? And I don't think we meant to do that um, in the A, B, and C. Um, so I just want to make that statement. Then the other statement is, I'm not sure of the bike and pedestrian path, whether it's under climate action or somewhere else, but I have heard lots of comments from residents on, um, you know, uh, streets and safety and roads and crosswalks. So I don't know whether it goes under climate action or later, but that I think is a resident prior priority for making it safe to get around town, <laughs> whether it's in your car, walking, biking, or crossing the street. So it, it seems stuck in here and bike and pedestrian path um, for TAC. Um, so it's just a question on whether whether it belongs here, whether it goes someplace else. But my other one was just on, a, are we trying to substitute people? Then the last one is on the on trash hauler. I think what we're asking for is staff support as the council works this through. Um, I think this is a multi-year process, Michelle, on this on the trash hauler. I don't think it's a one year. So if this wording says that, I'm happy with it. Thanks, Kathy. Jennifer? Yeah, can I? Um request, and I'll go through this quickly, um, just some specific word changes for this be the time to do that in, in this objective. You would like to request word changes? Yeah, or a couple word insertions. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has to do with, yeah, just a little what Kathy said, you know, maybe starting implementation or getting ready for implementation. <clears throat> so number two, where it says complete joint powers, um, can we add the word entity agreement um, formation and then insert the words and start implementation after public utilities? I'm sorry. So it would be community choice aggregation, complete joint powers entity formation and start implementation. Right, and then for three, um, take, I'm sorry, let me just read it through. Complete, because I wrote it down. Complete joint powers entity formation and start implementation, semicolon. Complete submission of the Valley Green Energy Community Choice Aggregation application to the Department of Public Utilities, and then insert these five words and start implementation upon approval. Jennifer, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not more aware, like in terms of the timeline on this, is that within this one year time frame? Will... Well, it's really saying whenever the this um, the application for the community cho choice app app application has been pending, but whenever it is that that is okay. approved by the state, that the implementation begin, not be completed. Um, okay, and then three, take necessary steps towards and support the town council in developing a waste hauler bylaw that is feasible and includes universal compost pickup comma and insert the three words local compost processing thank you i mean this we'll discuss this comma and then the rest is this remains and pay oh comma, and pay as you throw fee structure and start implementation if adopted. <clears throat> and then just five more words. And then four, take action on the following, if we could include new initiatives of the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan, as well as other actions prioritized for fiscal year 22, 23, and 24. Can you read that one again? Yeah, take action on the following, 
new initiatives, and then the words remain of the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan, and if we could add, as well as other actions so, that were already prioritized, as well Jennifer, as other actions for 20 fiscal year. Jennifer, are you by doing that keeping A, B, and C? Because that's what I was questioning, um, whether A, B, and C belong here. Are those your new ones? No, just saying as well as the other priorities that have already been there. So you would delete A, B, and C? I, I'm not even commenting on A, B, and C. That I'll leave up to the committee. So I after what Kathy's asking though is are the new initiatives, Jennifer, A, B, and C? Is that why you're including that language? No, just to say that whatever climate action goals were already in the pipeline. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm having I'm I'm a little confused about A, B, and C too. So maybe we maybe we'll right. hear. I'm not sure where problem. they came from. If that came directly from CARP. From, from the actual, not CARP, but from the ECAC maybe. What I'm asking Jennifer is if you put the following new, then you're implying the thing. Do you just want to remove the word following? Take action. Yes, I, I guess, yes. No, I, I'm not saying that's the right way, but it's- right. No, 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 I was, just, I was just trying to get in there that we already have initiatives that were prioritized for, hmm past fiscal years and the one coming up and we wanted to keep those in the pipeline. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Jennifer, was that it for this? That's it. Yeah, that's okay. it. So let's go to Anna. Um, okay. So I've got several post-its and I apologize. They're not going to be in perfect order here, but um, the, the walking bike, the, the walking bike, sorry, the walk and bike part of this um, paragraph um, this is something, Kathy, to kind of respond to what you were saying. I think it's both, honestly. I think prioritizing non-vehicular travel was something that the CARP did want to, um, that the CARP does emphasize. And so I could see it going either place, but it is part of a climate goal in the sense of promoting pedestrian and, and bicycle um, safety as an alternate form of, of travel. So, um, but what I would say instead of re-examine is, uh, I want it, I think re-examination is the first step of creating an implementation plan for or something along those lines um, might be helpful. I'm comfortable if folks feel like this needs to move to a different section, but I do want to emphasize that it has ties to our climate goals um, as outlined in the CARP as well. Um, I'm, I'm struggling with what, so one of Paul's, if you can, whenever you're um, set, Mandy, I don't want to rush you expand the second, the first comment from Paul that says implementation of CCA. I think what, what he's saying here is, I don't, and I, I agree, I don't think that we can put implementation in the goals when implementation isn't something that he has control over. Um, and so I, I or, or I want to have further conversation about this. My, my current thought is that we can't put something in here that he has not really, doesn't really have the ability to say stop or go on. So um, I'm trying to think, kind of work through that as part of, can we include start implementation? Like, doesn't that seem obvious that once it's approved, it would be implemented or am I overthinking this? Um, so I have a question about that. Um, I, I'm struggling with the phrasing of start implementation. It seems redundant to me. Implementation does feel like a, a start, but again, that's me being picky. Um, and then to go back to A, B and C, one of the things, and Mandy, if you don't mind scrolling down to the, are we substituting and expanding that one? Um, thank you. So these are overlapping um, with the things that were said. These are not necessarily new. The I think the pedestrian and um, bicycle plan would be new, but uh, an energy benchmarking and disclosure bylaw, that would be on us, not actually on Paul necessarily. So it would be supporting work towards, but. To be honest with you, so much of that disclosure is covered under the new, um, would be covered under the new rental registration bylaw that we really need to consider whether that's something that still makes sense for us to do. Um, and then the, do, 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 can you scroll a tiny bit? I'm sorry. Um, yep, so the, the retrofits of multifamily complexes is the same thing as the um, HVAC and timeline for electrification that he mentions, I think, in his next comment. Um, and then, doo -doo -doo -doo, sorry, 
Um, Jennifer, I think I'm, I'm curious about, and I'd love to hear more from you about the inclusion of uh, local compost processing, because if I'm interpreting that correctly, that's a huge additional part of that bylaw. It sounds amazing. And am I, misunder am I misunderstanding it? Okay, great. It's not for the town to do it. It's just to have the composting done locally. Okay, I think, yeah, I was like, what does local mean? Because we don't have, anyway, okay. Um, I just wasn't sure if we were putting in something that totally changed the amount of energy needed. Okay, um, so I think that that's it. I think my main point here is that these the, the initiatives that, uh, I, I don't know that we need to say new initiatives because I do not believe that all of these are new. I think that a lot, as Paul, out, as Paul stated, have been in process. They just, we phrased them slightly differently. Um, especially the multifamily retrofits, et cetera, et cetera. I'm done. Thanks, Anna. Okay, thank you, Mandy. Um, so I don't know what, where I am on some of these changes. I'm confused about the change to number two with the word entity, um, given Paul's comments, sort of what Anna said about it, um, and then the start implement implementation, because Paul's comments, he has no control over it. Um, you know, and, and what is a joint powers entity? It sounded like Jennifer wanted to get rid of the word agreement, but Paul talks about a joint powers agreement, not an entity. Um, I just thought it was officially called an entity agreement. Yeah, I, I don't actually know. So, <laughs> but when you were reading yours, Jennifer, you were getting rid of the word agreement. Which no, is no, I didn't want to get rid of it. I just want to insert okay. it. Okay. And then, you know, and it sounds, you know, from Paul's comment, it sounded like you have to complete the formation and that form, once that's done, the agreement isn't really implemented. The agreement is sent on to submit to CCA at the DPU. And only after all of that is done is things implemented. But Jennifer, some of your wording, which I did not put into this was to put a start implementation. So no, upon the approval. No, I, I think when you last read yours too, you sort of split it into two separate sections. Uh, complete the JPEA formation and start implementation. And then you said semicolon and submit Valley Green Energy CCA application. No, let me read it. It's complete joint powers entity formation. I guess that's what it should say. I'm sorry. I guess that's it will be an entity once it's approved. So complete joint powers, entity formation, and start implementation. Semicolon, complete submission of the Valley Green Energy Community Choice Aggregation Application to the DPU and start implementation upon approval. I guess I'm not sure whether the joint powers entity can even be implemented until the DPU approves the CCA. But the way you read it, you have the implementing of the joint powers entity before the CCA is approved by the DPU. And it, from Paul's comment, it doesn't sound like that can be the case. So uh, let me ask- Jennifer. Entity is formed by the agreement, right? Um, I think there is just a, to, we want to communicate that we want to do everything we can to move this along and start implementation upon approval. That this is a priority. Right. So the underlying concern or the underlying intention here is to make sure that it's a priority. Is and what that once approved implementation starts. Mm -hmm. And Mandy, are you saying that Paul's comment indicates that he has no control over, and I think Anna said this as well, that he has no control over implementing it. So you really, Jennifer, well, I think, are you wanting there to be? Well, I guess I'm wondering, do, does, okay, well, this is probably another conversation, but does, does the entity, the community choice aggregation has to be approved by the Department of Public Works, but I'm not sure that the entity agreement, that's between the different towns that are involved. I think that's independent of. The agreement is, but I guess my question was, I don't think you can do any, once the agreement is signed and the entity is sort of formed, you submit to DPW, but then the DPU, I mean, and, but then everything's on hold until DPU acts, including doing anything about the entity. That's my understanding. And so. No, I think the entity, because else. the application is already in. 
as I understand it, the entity could be formed separate of the. It sounds like we have a question that can't right, we have a question, so I don't want to take up so, time here. Yeah, let's move on, um, and we'll we just... can get the, it answered by Monday. That sounds great. Yeah. And, and my other comments were towards number four, um, and I, I think it goes to what Anna was saying and what um, Kathy at one point was saying. I, I don't know. So for history, A, B, and C came from an ECAC email to at least Anna. Um, who then forwarded it to us. I, it might have gone to the whole council regarding lists from a well prior revision version of this. Um, and they were just a portion of a list of like nine or 10 items that ECAC had listed. Um, so that's where that came from. I'm concerned with Paul's comment though. And I wonder, uh, you know, so I, I guess I'm leaning towards just saying take action on the the items or something of the CARP that have been prioritized for FY 22, 23, and 24, and leaving it at that and removing everything after that would be my- Anna, do you, Anna would you speak to that? Just because you received the email, so it would be helpful to hear. Sure, thank you. I, I mean, I think I, I'm uncomfortable without giving some specificity. I think that for me, and, and maybe this is my preference, I think that um, ECAC went through and, and the document that I believe I sent to everyone included the, a really great list about the percentage change in emissions required um, that each project, each element that they wanted addressed would kind of where it would get us. Um, and so I think for me, it's, it is important to keep the specificity in there also for ourselves, right? Like we're demonstrating on this call that we, while we are, I'm not gonna discount that we are very smart people, are not experts on, on climate action and energy. And so to keep specificity in here also allows for us to go back through and, and not just say, okay, great, we had these vague goals, but to say, oh, we actually knew what they were and we can check back in on them. So I, I, I would prefer to keep some specificity in here, especially given that you know ECAC did a significant amount of effort to come to make sure that they were bringing forward the goals that felt most relevant or the areas that felt most relevant um, from the CARP. I do not believe that it's different from past year from past prioritization lists. Um, I believe the only exception would be that they included the um, local uh, waste hauler bylaw um, in their priorities this year. So I think I, I guess I, I'm not comfortable taking out the level of specificity that um, where we where we clarify which areas we'd like him to address. Okay, just as a process question. So you're saying that ECAC asked for these items to be prioritized. So what we're saying is that if a committee comes forward and asks for items to be prioritized, that we'd like to include them in this specific way. Am I understanding that correctly? I mean, I think that that's one way to interpret it. I think that ECAC was specifically tasked with identifying priority areas. And so it feels it feels to me like that was a, a charge to them. Um, and given the council's adoption of the reduce our emissions by, um, then ECAC was told, great, what do we need to do to, to hit that mark by 2030 or 2050? So it's, it's not necessarily that they've identified what they see as priorities. They identified the equation to get us to those emissions that we as a council committed to. Um, and this is the town manager action that's required to do that. Got it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, so Mandy, did you want to respond to that before I go to Andy? Yeah, I still have questions because the CARP is, it was ECAC's identification of the steps that needed to be done. And Paul in his comment here with what is on tap for, on tap for 2023 to 24, and he mm -hmm. lists a whole bunch of things, yeah. is completely different from what ECAC just emailed us about the goals. And so I'm struggling with, he pulled it from CARP. You're saying, you know, I know CARP was what that plan was to get us to reach the 2025 goals in our, and now ECAC has a completely new list. So I understand Paul's confused and saying, well, are we changing the list completely? Because yeah. he's saying we can't do both. And so which list are we picking? The one that was in CARP or the new ECAC list that is slightly different from the CARP list. And I would prefer to go with the list that Paul has already planned for mm -hmm. that came from CARP. Yeah, so, so the list that ECAC had is also coming from CARP. And I think there's more overlap than we're necessarily realizing. So 
I think like when I'm looking at what Paul has on, on the docket, right? The, sorry, I my somehow I have the biggest screen in the world and it's still too small. Um, so when I'm looking at what Paul's got, we have the GHG inventory update that was on the list from ECAC. I'm trying to do look at both at once. The heat pump program, um, that is also on, it, he, he's phrasing them differently, which is a little bit tough, um, but they are shared in both areas. There are a few that ECAC has that were not on Paul's list, but everything that Paul has was on the ECAC list, if that makes sense. So there are several new things, um, but there's not, there's nothing that Paul had that ECAC was like, no, don't do that anymore. Um, the fleet vehicle inventory, ECAC has that as a larger capital um, emissions inventory. They, that's what they want to see. Um, they would like to see the dashboard, right, where, where this information is publicly available, um, where it's not just an internal, uh, internal process. Um, the solar assessment, I think, is the only one that Paul has that they did not have on their list because I think that they were like, it's already in progress, which I do think we should, this was my, the reason I had my hand up before, I do think that we should add that in if we are getting into specifics, which as I had mentioned, I would like, um, is that completion and, and um, realization of a solar bylaw. Um, but the municipal building inventory of HVAC and timeline for charge to electrification, ECAC combined that with the vehicles to say we want a capital um, inventory. So it's, it, it's phrasing, honestly, a lot of this seems like phrasing, um, but for me, I don't see I don't see a miss in the crossover with the exception of the solar bylaw composting, they didn't, they didn't align with those. Does that help Mandy at all? I mean, it does. It makes me think we should just take the list in Paul's comments and essentially replace the A, B, and C with Paul's list, as well as it adding the one thing that wasn't on that list. Yep. That's fine with me. I think that the um, I think in that sense, it would be because support work towards uh, energy benchmarking and disclosure bylaw. Again, like we have to do so much pre work before that can be a town manager action. Um, that I'm not, I, I don't know that it needs to be a specific goal necessarily. Um, but the re examine and a feasible bike and pedestrian plan could go under a different category if you're not comfortable with it here. And the third one is within the list that Paul provided. I would just wanna make sure that we, and I'm happy to do it right this second, just look back through to make sure that we've kind of captured what um, what ECAC wrote out as well. Does that work? So let's give Mandy a second on that. And I'm gonna ask Andy, is your comment specific to this particular discussion? I know Kathy had something to say about this, but I wanna check in with you first since you've had your hand raised. You're muted, Andy. Still muted. <laughs> You're muted, Andy. Muted. Yeah, I got it finally. Having problems with the computer all of a sudden was throwing through some of my screen. Um, so my comments, I mean, I'll be real quick so that I, uh, because uh, I think that my, some of my concerns are that um, we are getting very specific and creating a job that's impossible to do. And we need to be very cognizant of what it is that we're asking of any individual, um, including our town manager and uh, couch things always in, make progress towards or implement um, or explain why implementation is not um, possible. Things that give um, at least some recognition of the extent of what the um, requests are. And secondly, the uh, second point I have, and it's not just related to what we're just talking about, but I think in general, um, because of some of the public comments, we get we have various committees that are making recommendations to us as a council. Um, and I think we need to make a decision as a council whether we are adopting those recommendations or not that it ought to not get into the goals without a process that has the council adopt ownership of the 
specific steps that are being taken. And uh, I think that we're in danger of doing that in many realms and uh, this being one of them. And the third thing that um, uh, Jennifer's recommendation about local compost processing, we have not talked about that yet. That has not been adopted um, and agreed to by the TSO committee. It has not been uh, really discussed amongst the uh, sponsors because I'm one of the uh, four co-sponsors of this. Um, and there are um, problems with uh, whether, that, whether or not that's feasible because we also are recognizing that we're going out to a bidding process with the, uh, or what we're hoping to go out to a bidding process, we're hoping that we will get there and asking um, haulers to provide uh, bids on services. And we don't now um, specify um, how, uh, things are being dis are being disposed of once they are picked up in any other realm and I'm a little bit hesitant to start getting into that kind of specificity on the compost side we don't do that on uh, uh, what to do with paper what to do with plastic what to do with glass what to do with the trash itself we're trusting that um, we are asking the uh, uh, bidders to who will come to us and say we would like to do this that they will make proposals to us and we judge proposals so I think that it's going a little bit too far too fast uh, to get that kind of specificity in at this stage uh, we really need to be very careful about not uh, um, doing those um, uh, types of uh, decisions and, and let it get ahead of the process. So we need to think about the order of the process. Thank you, Andy. Jennifer, would you respond please to the local compost processing? Yeah, I have to respectfully disagree. That is, I mean, we're saying as feasible, you know, work toward developing, but that's an important part of what makes this helping to reach our climate action goals that the composting and you know is done I would say locally like in the Pioneer Valley and there are entities that do that that really ensures that that waste is composted and can even be brought back to the community i mean there's a concern that you know everything we put in our recycling bin does that really get recycled and that's part of why we're also want to move to a system where maybe we have a little more control over what's happening with what we discard because just putting something in a recycling bin and hoping for that it's actually recycled we, we want to uh, we we want to ensure that we're not just going on faith and that this is we may not be able to have local compost processing but it should be it's a definite part of the goal and why we want to move to a new waste hauler system it's to have a fee structure that encourages residents to reduce their garbage basically that we have Composting pickup is part of the basic service that makes it easier for folks to compost. And that that composting, you know, be done locally so that it goes back into the soil and we can even maybe, you know, it can come back to residents, you know, for for purchase or, you know, whatever, but that that is an important part of what our goal is. And we may not be able to achieve it, but I think it's an essential part of the three components are. Curbside compost pickup as part of the basic service, pay as you throw, fee structure to encourage reducing um, garbage disposal and the local composting. So that's an important, um, and again, we, yes, it's not what we do with our recycling currently, but maybe we should, you know, have, have it be part, you know, be more uh, mindful or have some control over what actually happens with what we think we're recycling. Jennifer, can I just ask you, if we're framing this as a goal for the town manager, <clears throat> what control does he have? I think over we're just saying that as we work on the bylaw, we want that those those are the three basic components of the bylaw. Okay, okay, thank you. Andy, did you wanna to respond to that? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, uh, yeah, maybe we would, and we haven't really talked about that yet. So I, I, that's one of the things that I don't think that we have agreement to, but I can understand the point that Jennifer's making. However, uh, at this point, we're also waiting on um, our uh, consultant that uh, the town has now hired to try and let us know what is feasible and um, so we're, we're jumping ahead and assuming that something is feasible and uh, it's getting into this level of specifics that uh, where we don't know where we're what 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 is possible yet and it, um, it just seems that um, uh, it gets to a general point um, as you develop goals of how much specificity you really feel you really it's really appropriate for the council to put into goals it and uh, I think that it's so uh, it's partly an example of a general problem and uh, it's also um, a question of what um, is is the right way to go about it and we don't know that yet because we haven't heard from our consultant I just think we're jumping too fast uh, to put it in there in the way that it is. And if uh, you're going to leave it in, then it says if feasible in there because it uh, it, it leaves um, it, it's really too strong as it is worded now. I guess it's basically those three services would be part of the RFP. I'm not. I, I don't want to take up. Okay, let's, yeah, because we also want to think about making the document equitable throughout all of the goals. And so I can see a circumstance like, for example, the resident oversight board that we're talking about in a different goal. Um, we might have some wishes about that and we may want those things to be included, um, but we may not have, you know, including them in the at this level may or may not. We need to make sure that this is an equitable uh, yeah. situation. Okay. I don't want to take up. Um, okay. All right. Let's go to Kathy and then um, Anna. And, and, and then I, I do see, Mandy, that your hand is up and given your um, drafting this, I just want to check in with you to see if it's a question regarding. Drafting. No, it's a comment. So Kathy okay. and Anna should go first. Okay. okay. I, I, I think it's important. Um, I'm going to try to rephrase what Andy was saying. It's important to realize these are the town manager performance goals. We're not writing the bylaws in these. So we do not need to get this specific. If I could see saying, support the town council in developing a waste hauler bylaw, period. Um, because it's up to us, the council, to figure out what we want to do here. Staff support to figure out how to do it and then get it done. We can't put, um, I, Jennifer, I would go through each of these. If we went down to the- Yeah, the, no, I'm okay. I guess I- you know, so I just would get okay. really. We could take even, out the local composting. And I will, you know, yes. You know, so, and see, I would even do developing a waste hauler bylaw, period. You know, I, I'm just, that is feasible. So we all know what we're talking about. And we don't so, even. No, have, that would make me a little uncomfortable. Okay. I, yeah. if we're going to leave the detail in. But I'm just saying, if, you know, the solar siting, we could go into a solar siting dialogue that has the following elements. We could go into each right. one of these okay. things. You can we, take out the local, take that out of that. But I'd like to keep the rest in. Otherwise, okay. yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying that when we get later, you know, even on, um, you know, the, uh, so th that was my general comment. Yeah. Then, so could um, we leave it as it was, just taking out the local compost? I can, do, I can do anything that gets us into the next. Yes, I agree. I agree. Honestly, thank you. But let me just also say my <laughs> other point is that Paul and his staff need to know to 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 need to have the wording be what they think the wording should be. So even on number two, we should just Mandy just make sure we've got the wording that's as because that because that's a we've got this joint agreement. We need to get approval before we can do anything else. So we just need to get that wording right. So so that it's not. Can we, yeah. can we put three back as it was before my local? I'm waiting for all work. the other comments, Jennifer. Yeah. Before okay. I do that, I've heard okay. you. 
<laughs> okay, so that so my point is going to be this on the later ones too. This is not where we write our bylaws. So I'm glad to see that we got rid of the um, the specifics on a couple other things, you know, and uh, I'll stop there. Um, if Paul gave us this list from CARP that they are working on, I think this is a good list to put in because we need at the end of the year, or end of 10 months to be able to say, hey, do we have this? Do we have this? Do we have this? And then, and so we can say we got halfway there or make progress. So I think just when we go through all of this, it's Paul plus the staff are trying to do this work, right? And so we have to do it within that context and not try to start writing our bylaws here. Um, that's my main point especially a bylaw that doesn't need, there's not even a rough draft of it <laughs> yet. Okay, thank you, Kathy. And I think that Mandy and I are gonna wanna check in with Paul before Monday, given that he wasn't able to be here today to get clarification and just make sure we've got this language right. Okay, so we do need to move on from this. I'm gonna go to Anna and um, Jennifer and Mandy, but if we could just keep in mind that we we do need to move on. Um, I'll be quick. Yep. I, I think Mandy got the, the points that I was hoping to see. I just, I want to emphasize one quick thing because I think that um, the way that we have written the climate action goals, you know, it does, it can set precedent if we want it to or allow it to for other areas. And so I want to just really reiterate briefly the fact that the council voted to adopt the, the right. um, emissions goals for 2030. This was an actual vote the council took prior to my time on it, but this was the vote the council took. The charge of ECAC is to not only set the, the initial goals, but to recommend, include a roadmap of steps to achieve said goals. This is the roadmap that ECAC has provided. So I think that this is, you know, I want to, the level of specificity we are getting here is one, does include things that Paul is already working on because ECAC had provided those steps um, that the council had agreed to, the council didn't agree to the specific steps, but the council agreed to 2030. Uh, 2030 is seven years away, y'all. Like we can't keep leaving things so broad. Um, we, our jobs, one of our jobs is to set these goals for the town manager. And, and so I, I really strongly, this, this is a hill I'm willing to die on of, of getting the specificity to stay in here at some degree, because I think that it's really important that we're able to look back and say, all right, we needed to have that, you know, that heat pump program for residents, specifically for multifamily. It needs to be in there. So uh, Mandy, I think your changes, I think, get at what I was hoping to see in there, and I am appreciative for that. Thank you. I just want to, I want to check in with Pat. Pat, I saw your hand was up, and you haven't spoken, so um, is it still up? <laughs> I'm wrestling with myself about what I want to say or how I want to say it. Um, several things have come up, images, and I'm looking now at the whole document and all of the areas in general, so it's sort of like a uh, a warning. Uh, it's been talked about, let's be equitable. There's a hill to die on. If we accept the ECAC list, do we accept all of the community safety working group list uh, that's equitable? And to emphasize performance goals. And, and I guess what I really want to say is the purpose of these goals for the town manager is not to create a re-election manifesto. It's to guide the work of the town manager and the town staff. And I think that we're conflating all kinds of things into this. We do need some specifics, but let's get off of what we haven't even created when we're having such difficulty addressing what we've already looked at over the last year or so. So that's my advice or comment. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, that's that's really wise. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Jennifer and then Mandy. Yeah, again, I just wanted to, before we move on, developing a waste hauler bylaw that is feasible and includes universal compost pickup and pay as you throw fee structure, that has to be there because that is what the bylaw is. I mean, we currently have a waste hauler system. The reason this bylaw has been proposed is to get those too very, so that has to be back in. Otherwise, what's the bylaw? Yeah, I'm not seeing any opposition or hands right. raised. So I just um, want to make sure that that's yeah. uncrossed out before we move on. Sure, yeah, Mandy. Um, so I have a comment on that. 
Go which ahead. is yeah, why, why I was Andy, I believe, that. asked for it to be deleted. Kathy said it may be deleted. I think it should be deleted because of something that Michelle, you said. We've now added a solar bylaw in. We've now, we in further ones, we have a rental registration bylaw. We've had um, zoning bylaw stuff. And in none of them do we put what the goal of the bylaw is, we just mentioned the bylaw. And so what makes this one different that has already been referred to a council committee? It's not like there's no proposal at all. It's already sitting in a council committee, the, the waste hauler bylaw, um, uh, the work on it. And so what makes this one different that we have to describe its goals when we're not describing the goals of a rental registration bylaw? We're not describing the goals and what needs included in a solar bylaw. And so I think for Michelle's point of keeping things sort of, uh, and equitable is not the word I would use, consistent throughout the document on specificity, um, which is what GOL does, consistency. Um, we either need to add to all the other bylaw mentions goals and all, or we need to delete it from this one. And that's not to say we don't agree with what was here, but I'm not sure it's the appropriate place to put it. So I would delete it as that I believe I heard Andy and Kathy support deletion for, which is why it's still deleted. Okay. So I'm going to ask for some help here. We have an issue that sounds like it could need some vote to be taken to decide whether we're going to delete or we're not going to delete. I want to be able to move on from this because we have other areas. Um, so I'm going to look to Lynn um, and just ask Lynn, um, would this be in your mind something that we would take then to the full council for, you know, whether... Do we vote on specific items at times? Has that ever occurred in these documents if we can't come to a consensus? It does. That is what's called amending the document. And okay. you amend and vote. Okay. And would you recommend that we would do that here or that we would do that on Monday? So this would be held out. I mean, I, I don't think Mandy, Mandy deleted something Um. Mandy has control of the document. I appreciate what Mandy's doing, but it was there. So we have to, you know, now figure out what is the amendment? Are we amending to delete it or are we amending it to add it back in? That's where I'm a little bit lost here. I'm going to go to Athena because Athena has her hand raised and may have. There, there could be a motion to add it or there could be a motion to uh, remove it. You could vote either way so that we have a clean version to for the council to look at on Monday. I think that's going to be the easiest way. So I think you could look for a motion either way on that. And I, uh, Athena, would you prefer or advise that the motion be made with GOL only or with all of the counselors present? That was going to be my point of order. Who's sending the document to the council on Monday? I feel GOL is. That's been the process, right, up to up to now. So that makes sense. Yep, I agree. So, so at the, at, right at the end of this process, um, the GOL members should vote to um, recommend to the council this document. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to move on, and we're going to we know that GOL at the end has to vote on this document. So at that point, if we want to have an amended motion. We'll deal with that as a committee after we've gotten through our discussion on the rest of the items, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and move on um, to community health and safety. And there are a couple things that are highlighted here. Um, Mandy, did you highlight continue to support the revision of the residential rental bylaw at our last? So that is highlighted for all of the bylaws because of the council goal, if I page down, that has, it was a discussion on um, the relationship to the town council has provide appropriate support to council committees. And so the question was, do any bylaws actually need referenced in the policy goals 
because once they've been referred to, so if it's referred to a council committee, so that's rental registration, that's the um, waste hauler bylaw. It's not the solar bylaw at this point, um, but you know, it do they need to be mentioned up above, above in the policy goals or in order for the support process, or is it enough in the other goals? So that was why that one was highlighted here. Mm -hmm. For the same reason that at one point the waste hauler bylaw was highlighted. Does the council relationship with the council goal cover these such that these could be deleted? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to comment on that? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands right now. Um, and would the person who added re-examine and a feasible create an implementation plan on the bike and pedestrian plan. So that was the move from the conversation today. So we just need to know whether it's going where, what place it's going. Okay. Lynn. Yeah, I didn't get my hand up fast enough, but I think it's important to keep the names of the bylaws that are among the goals in these because they really represent values of the council and they represent a lot of work of the council. So even though we're saying the staff support's needed, I still think we should list the bylaws. That's my personal opinion. Uh, uh, I, I like keeping the bylaws in because I do think that one of the things that we've, we've needed to emphasize is uh, our need as a council for staff support. And so um, Paul has, has been able to do that and has indicated that staff are very much driven by our goals. And so if we are going to want staff support, having this in the goals makes sense to me. Um, the other thing is I would say the uh, uh, bike and pedestrian plan put forward by TAP, I think that actually would go down under the stewardship um, infrastructure management maintenance and land stewardship. Um, that would be my opinion on where that goes. If it's helpful, take it or leave it. <laughs> yeah, I think that is, I, I think that is helpful. All right. So, and there, did Paul have any questions on this goal? No. Let's see. Okay, great. So, moving on to housing affordability, economic vitality. Did we have issue here? Did we have, I think the last meeting, this one was sailed through or were there other comments? I see Pam's and, and I see Kathy. So let's go to Pam. Thanks. Um, I sent you and Lynn and then just uh, recently Mandy Joe some wording for an addition to the economic vitality. It would be a number four. Okay. You sent it, by email, Pam? I sent you by email, correct. And Mandy Joe by email and Lynn by email if you have that. <clears throat> and it's essentially, um, it's a recap of uh, what the first speaker this morning mentioned. And that is this ongoing conversation about how do we support um, families because that's what we all keep saying that we want here in the, in the, in the town. So it's um, essentially to study and recommend initiatives to promote a more child and family friendly town culture, essentially with a goal of making the town more attractive to young families and first time home, home buyers. Um, a full sentence might be more detail, which we've just talked about adding or not adding, but that would be study and recommend initiatives to promote a more child and family friendly town culture essentially parens, including childcare, recreational and community building options with the goal of making the town more attractive to young families and first time home buyers. But I like, I like including, yeah, thank you. There it is. Mm -hmm. Pam, I spoke with Matt a bit about this as well. And I was just wondering if, so a study, I had thought to put this under community engagement, um, but it, it seems to fit here as well, but that was my initial thought is to put the study under community engagement um, as a way of sort of engaging our young families now that we have and, and renters and others. Um, but let's go to Pam, Pam, was that, 
um, did that complete your thought on this one? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Kathy? Um, I, it either goes here or later on financing, but um, again, I am worried as we get the list longer and longer. And what you just added, Pam, I think all of us wouldn't mind assessing this. Um, I don't know who's going to study it. I don't know who's going to recommend it, which staff person, you know, you know, like I'm just thinking, what are we talking about here? Um, so I'm not going to comment that more, but the exploring the possibility of ec an economic director position. Could we talk about grant supported economic development director position? Just what I'm concerned about is that one of the ways we are, one of the ways Paul and his staff have been able to stretch our budget beyond local resources is bringing in grant money. So we brought in grant money for road sidewalks. We brought it in for cultural issues. Um, and I don't see any place that we're acknowledging that. Um, so it's the word grant. So I did, I looked in financing too. You know, it's it's they they did a remarkable job. The whole staff group in the last year in bringing in money to the town. Um, that is that is an economic vitality because if we can, particularly if we can bring in outside resources. So I don't have a wording here, but I don't think we have the funds to add an economic development director, but maybe we have a grant funded way of doing this. Um, and I'm looking at the state surpluses and I'm really worried that they're gonna just give us back our tax money again. And I shouldn't say that because a lot of people are happy to get those checks, <laughs> but I would rather they gave us grant money to do some of this work. So, so you know, you know, so that's, yeah, so Mandy's putting, for, you know, even grant funding, you know, um, or uh, Lynn at one point, Lynn, and you said in the Donahue, you had a grant getter who more than paid for their job, you know, you know, in terms of it wasn't a just adding to an expense line, it was enhancing a revenue line. So I'll stop talking there, but it's either here or later that I'm trying to figure out something that might be feasible rather than um, Paul coming back to us and say, I don't have the money to do that. Um, that that was my reaction to the economic development or even study. We've added a study here. Um, you know, if there were funds to study, I could certainly see putting a group on this, um, but I'm just worried on who are we going to, who are we asking to do what? Um, I'll stop because the school is, as needless to say, the elementary school is heavily on my mind, what we're going to be asking of taxpayers and the amount of resources it's going to take for the town. So Thanks. that's it. Okay, thank you. Anna? Um, thank you. I agree that uh, number four, I, I believe, should be under community engagement. I agree with what Michelle said. Um, I think, Kathy, you were, you were starting to realize the number two, right, which is explore the funding possibility. I, I think that you were doing the job for Paul, which was great. It might be through grants, but I think that for me, the phrasing of explore the possibility of adding or funding, I like funding more. I think that phrasing makes sense. Um, uh, I don't, I don't know that we need to specify through grants or otherwise. I think Paul is as, is very clear as the rest of us are that when we can fund things through grants, that's amazing. Um, okay. and that, that, in my opinion, that that's one of the options, right? That, would no, that That's fine. You know, it's in my mind, Anna, it's just grant funded positions, not a permanent position. I understand. And, I and you can make it contingent. So that's yeah. fine to put the funding in. As um, a, yeah. And then the only other thing is, you know, I am, I'm still the the phrasing of what Mandy just moved. Sorry, Mandy. Um, and I knew we just moved it, so we can talk about it later. It still makes me a little bit uncomfortable that we're we're trying to place a value judgment on who we want to comprise our community. Um, and so I'm I, I I'm trying to sit with it and figure out because yes, I would absolutely love to um, to say that we you know we want a, a child and family friendly town. Of course we do, and um, are we in, in phrasing this, passing a value judgment on who should or should not be in our town? And so I, I'm trying to wrestle with that a little bit. 
um, and I haven't come to a conclusion and maybe when we come back around to it, I will. Um, but I also agree with what I think Kathy was saying, which is one of the huge ways that we are, are moving towards this is hopefully passing uh, a, an override to get a new elementary school, right? And so I, I think that there are some things that are moving here. Um, but I, I also, I think that the emphasis on first time home buyers um, might may not necessarily fit with all of the other elements that are in that paragraph. And so I wanna, um, I wanna that's something I, I mean, I believe in all of the elements here. I'm just trying to figure out the phrasing of it to, to make it not seem like a, like a value judgment of this is who we want and we don't want anyone else. Um, so I, I do, I like, I appreciate the emphasis on first time home buyers as a, um, as an element and believe that might fit back under the yeah, housing affordability part. Oh, look, there it is. It's already there. Yep. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Pam? Yeah, I, I appreciate Anna's comments on, on the, that item. Um, I think uh, encouraging staff or encouraging all of us to look for opportunities to enhance and facilitate um, you know, opportunities for, for kids um, certainly is benefits all of us, you know. Um, so I, I think it's not exclusionary. I think it's it's just reminding us that there there could be a focus that in fact would be an enhancement to anyone looking around and going, gee, do I want to live here or do I want to live there? The school will certainly be a big part of that, but so will other amenities or opportunities. So I I'd like to just keep it. All right. Anika, I saw that your hand was raised. Um, did you want to comment on this? Oh, my comments were uh, raised. Thank you. Okay. All right. So any other comments on economic vitality? Okay. So it looks like we're already moving on to housing affordability. Um, and I see Kathy's hand is raised. Okay. I, I have a question for the drafters of this. What do you mean by increase the diversity of housing stock available? And how do you think Paul and his staff can do yeah. that? In, you know, so, you know, so the first, I'm, I'm doing it in context. So we have promote and increase home ownership. Uh, we've got a housing shelter and, um, and uh, strategies to stabilize. So, is housing stock. Um, so we, I don't know what that means because later on we talk about zoning and, and different kinds of issues. So I don't think the town manager or staff has control over the diversity. So do we mean, you got it. Uh, I'll just, I'll just, and I don't know how diversity relates to affordability. Um, you know, nothing is stopping anyone from building tiny houses right now, or um, in most parts of town, you could do duplexes and triplexes, and people aren't building them because the market for them is not the market that they want to build for. So I'm just, it's purely a question on what do we mean by it, and how would we, at the end of a year, figure out whether he had had anything. So, and, and I'll stop because I think one of the diversities we're getting is through CPAC where Paul doesn't have direct control over what comes to them, but we have a, an extremely diverse set of housing uh, projects that are coming through the Community Preservation Act with condos, with apartments, with uh, shell, you know, small units for um, bring people off the street and give them, and we're, we've are we been very successful. And that um, is, uh, bye, I'm stopping. I just don't understand, I don't understand what it means. Okay, Kathy, before I go to Mandy, I just wanna pause and do a time check here um, and ask Athena, so, and and maybe Mandy. Um, so the uh, sewer regulations and the water and sewer bylaw both need to be taken care of, or all three need to be taken care of today. I've no, I've I've let Amy know that they may or may not be taken up today because I knew that the town manager goals were a priority, um, and they're still working through finance. So I don't think we're expecting to put them on the the agenda for the ninth. So um, we shouldn't feel pressure about that today. 
All three. So the, the sewer regulations and the water and sewer bylaw are all okay not to take up today. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Athena. Okay, Mandy. So um, I'll try to respond to Kathy and then make my own comment. So that increase the diversity of housing stock available to all residents is part of the comprehensive housing policy the council passed. It's one of the goals. Um, and so it comes from there. But what it means is make sure we have a variety of housing at a variety of price points. So not just single family homes or not just single family homes at a high price point. Um, make sure the single family homes say are at multiple price points. Make sure there are duplexes and triplexes. Triplexes are actually under apartments right now. So there aren't available for a lot of um, places in some of our residential areas because apartments aren't allowed in some residential areas. Um, so, so what can a town do versus zoning strategies, right? So some of it's zoning strategies, um, but others of it are things that our um, AMAHT has done or that um, Dave Zomek and our, you know, as assistant town manager and and his his department has done, which is look at land acquisition and then create an RFP that specifies a type of housing type. Okay. Not just, you know, like, and so, you know, that ball lane of townhouses supporting that one over, say, something that would be just apartments up at ball lane, you know. Gearing. So, so I think there are things that the town staff can do, especially with some of the stuff that AMAHT is going out on RFPs for. Okay, that, that answers my question. Thank you. You're welcome. And then my comment on Pam's request, number five was Pam's other request. Um, and I think it's covered in one and then probably in the finance section. I haven't scrolled down to finance because anytime I scroll, you scroll. Um, so I, I'm trying to minimize my scrolling. Um, but, you know, state... So first time home, you know, number one is prioritize initiatives to retain, promote. And I added into that, including first time home buyers, but that was low in income home ownership opportunities. And so I think five is covered mostly within that. Um, and then we could look at the finance article to see if grant, you know, maximizing grant opportunities is covered in finance. But I think it might be covered somewhere in the finance about grant opportunities. So I would delete number five, not because I don't support it, but I think it's just already covered. Yeah, I think it, it, I think it's covered. I think it's covered there, and I just want to say that CPA also has funded grants to support first-time home buyers. You know, so there is, and that brings in state dollars. So, I think number one captures all of it, Pam, in terms of where that where that support would come from. So I'm I'm agreeing with that. Um, I think this is the an example of adding a lot of details, which are good, um, but aren't necessarily crucial to, um, since we already have the goal in there, or we already have one of the action items in there. Okay, so I agree with that. Okay. Did you have another comment, Pam, on this section? No, I, I was going to agree that it looks like it is covered um, as long as we uh, beef up the, the finance portion as well. Okay, great. All right. Any other comments on housing affordability before we move on? Okay. So moving on to major capital building investments. And um, Pam, I see your hand is raised. Okay. <laughs> Kathy? You're muted, Kathy. Yeah, yeah. I just um it's it's kind of a comment on the Jones Library one. And um it's a report in 2023 on the status of financing. I think we also have had, and Paul and his staff are working on a plan B. Um so plan and, and would people be willing to status a fine any and a plan B if needed um, was what I was going to suggest because I'm a little bit worried that if we don't come up with several million dollars more financing, we'll be left without a now how do we move forward and I, and and I we asked him to do that when we did the memorandum of agreement. So it's it's just a question of, are people willing to add that wording with a report on the status of financing and a plan B if needed? 
And Kathy, are you saying, and maybe Anika would know also, um, are you saying that the building committee has already begun to think about and work on a plan B? There's, there's a little bit of that effort, mainly the town staff themselves, Michelle, have been doing an assessment of, it's clear that the HVAC system needs to be completely redone, you know, to, uh, fixed the roof. So we have, we've had elements of it, but going back into the building to say what would be the essential components of it. So, you know, there was never in the original sort of plan B, there was never uh, using space in a different way. It was mainly about ADA compliance and fixing the failing systems. It wasn't a, can we reuse the space? So I'm I'm just really worried that we wait till November of next year and we haven't raised the money and we have a library whose HVAC system is really failing. You know, so it's it's now emergency rather than, you know, just so so that's it. And it may be uh that that's in the works. Anika's on the um, building committee. I know it's come, it's come up regularly, but most of the attention is on fundraising now and getting the expansion uh, costs down. Um, so, Kathy, are you asking for a plan B to be developed now, regardless of whether the financing comes through in November, or are you asking that in November, if the financing doesn't come through, a plan B be developed? Um, I think what I'm asking for, Michelle, it's a great way you phrased it, is I don't want to just get a report on financing that we don't have the money to do this building. Now we have to go to the drawing boards. I would like to have the kernels of a plan B if needed. Um, so it's not now let's turn. And I know we can't turn on a dime. You know, so it's just that we 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 have the skeleton of it ready to go. So I'm I am looking to both Lynn and Anika because this may be pushing this too far. My concern that we we don't know what we're going to do if we don't if we can't afford the project. Okay, and I see that both Lynn and Anika have their hands raised. Lynn. I'm more than glad to have Anika speak to this first, although it's my understanding that the building committee is not working on plan B, but the town manager yes. is working with the facilities people on a plan B. Mm. Um, so I that that's my impression, at least. Um, I think what Kathy's trying to say, and I I'm hearing it loud and clear, and that is that if they come forward in the fall of 2023 with a financing, um, fundraising, if you will, um, report that basically doesn't seem like they're going to be able to reach their goal, then we don't want to wait uh, and for plan B. And that has been the goal of the town manager all along. That has been the goal of... Um, and it came out of when we did the memorandum of agreement and he and the facilities people ha and the finance director, I believe have been regularly been meeting with the library um, staff to look at what the plan B would be. So, Linda, you so said- I don't think it's, un I don't think it's unreasonable, but I think it would be best to say in a plan B if necessary. Yeah, and I would, if necessary, because I, if he's, Doing it anyway. I'm just saying that we can, we can again pat him on the head for doing it if we said we want you to do it. Um, so it's so why just and a plan B if necessary. So that was the way I wanted to write it. But I'm not going to um, push hard on this. I just think we do need one. Mm -hmm. And there's there's one being developed. So I think that's consistent. Okay. Anika might went away in though. Please. Uh, no, I, I think that you covered it. And, um, you know, also my concern would be just that if there are any changes um, that, you know, probably the trustees and, and at least um, Paul be consulted because we've, you know, the library has a certain amount of time to to focus on fundraising and we'd want to make sure that we weren't doubling, uh, you know, work for them additionally at the same time. 
Thank you, Anika. And Lynn, your hand is still raised. Is that just a holdover? Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions on this goal? All right. So let's move on to racial equity and social justice. Um, and I, I noticed, I think, Mandy, that the addition um, here of particularly the public safety departments um, was added. Um, it's not consistent with the motion that was adopted on November 14th. So I just, I have a question and perhaps it's about the addition on the other item under personnel management. So if you would want to speak to that. So it was added at the request as as part of a comment I received between the last council meeting and this one, and so that's hence the dis, the for further discussion and all. Um, but it was in response to a comment received and a request received um, from a counselor, so that counselor can speak up if they would like. Excellent. Just okay. like the town council was added for the same reason. <laughs> okay, so I see Pat's hand is raised. Thank you. Um, one of the thing, one of, ah, one, nope. I know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble. Um, one of the things that happened to me in the last meeting was uh, Alicia's comment about the intimacy of police entering a home uh, and, or any space. Uh, but particularly this idea of entering a home. And the one thing that I, I agree with many, many things, but one of the other things that Councillor Walker says is that anti-racism training is ongoing. And I know that in my own experience um, of learning and needing to relearn, learn again. Um, and to me, the public safety, the police department, press, fire, and EMS enter people's homes. They enter uh, very intimate spaces. I'm thinking about a man who had collapsed uh, outside of the senior center and uh, the EMS dealing with him and then dealing with those of us who were observing because we were, you know, trying to figure out are the cops going to handle this correctly? Uh, are they, or is this man all right? Or all of the things that you go through or just your curiosity. I believe that this work needs to be done by the Amherst Police Department. I have great respect for many of the people in the department and what they're trying to do. I have great respect for the members of CRESS and our fire and EMS departments, but just like myself, they need ongoing anti-racism work. Uh, the other thing that I, I it's, it's there, it's talking about options. Um, we want all of the town staff to be doing this. So to me, the town council needs to be charged with attending and participating in ongoing work around anti developing anti-racism, being anti-racist. As long as we keep ourselves out of it, we're doing a disservice to our residents and we are then doing a disservice to public safety personnel, et cetera. Uh, if we need to walk the walk, not just do the talk, and as Chalonet and I know, it's very difficult to get this council uh, together to focus on this as an idea that we need work as well. So I would like this tweaked so that um, that maybe going back to starting with the public safety departments, blah blah blah, um, and but adding town council. Uh, even before other staff, because they've been doing some of that work, not just the police department, but other departments. There have been staff trainers, et cetera. I don't have a lot of information about that. Um, all right, and I think that's all I have to say right this second. Okay, would anyone else like to comment on this? Yes, Alicia. Um, thank you, Michelle. Uh, so I wanted to um, support the, the adding of the town council um, because I do agree with the sentiment that it would be helpful for 
not just town employees, but town leaders and all of us to be following suit in these things. I think it's very important to follow through and it would help to affirm our commitment. And it's, you know, it's a learning process. Again, it's ongoing. These things are not, you know, you can't just become anti-racist. It's an active thing that you have to continually participate in and continually examine, you know, your behaviors and, and the things that happen um, around you. And so I think that I, I do agree with that. However, I'm still in uh, disagreement with the, yeah, the highlighted red part prior to what you're adding now, um, the public safety departments, Crestfire, EMS, and the police. Um, I am troubled by this because I'm not understanding why the edit has taken out the starting with the PD. Um, and so my frustration stems and, and disagreement stems from uh, the motion that I had proposed at a prior town council meeting, which is where this idea originated from. Um, and that idea was asking the town manager to work with the PD to identify steps that the department can take to, be, to create an actively, a proactively anti-racist culture within the PD and that those steps be documented and reported to the council. Um, and so that specific language and that specific motion, which has passed is what I was thinking of in terms of adding this to the town manager goals. So essentially my thought was that that motion had passed and ensuring that that is something that happens, we're putting it in the goals. So I'm just like still not really understanding why this is being edited. I don't necessarily not agree that all uh, town employees should also ultimately be phased in. I do agree that the town council should be phased in. I think that's a great idea. Um, but I'm still just not understanding this reframing of something very specific that was passed. Um, so I think that's where I still stand with that. And I, and I don't wanna, you know, I think most of you know what my arguments are here for that, but still not understanding why something that has already passed and should be happening can't just be plopped in the town manager goals as is. Like what is the need for editing for an initiative that has already passed? And Alicia, before I move on to the other comments, I just want to clarify that this particular number four here um, is different than under personnel management. Mandy, if you could just scroll down slightly. Um, so under personnel management, number five, um, this is where we talk about the proactive anti-racist culture. And this is where Crass, fire, and EMS and police were added, um, which is not consistent with the motion that was passed on November 14th. Um, additionally, number four up in uh, where we were just looking at um, is adding those items also adds to the motion that was the, the big motion that was passed on November 14th with regard to the rights trainings. So there's just, if we're thinking about keeping things consistent, if we're thinking about the motions that we've already passed, um, we did pass a motion on November 14th that focused first on the APD with respect to anti-racist culture, um, and there was an addition added here, which I think Mandy will speak to. Um, and so I'm willing to take these two together right now because I think that they sort of belong together in our discussion. And so I'll just make that clarification and then um, go to Mandy and then, uh, yes. Is Alicia. it okay? Sorry, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, no, please. thank you for that clarification because um, I am just realizing we were talking about the uh, first highlighted red section and not the second one at the bottom of the page. So I do appreciate that clarification. And I, my comments were more directed towards the objective under the personnel management section. Um, but again, just to speak to the, the consistency, which is what you're talking about, and if, and whether or not these are like two separate initiatives, or whether or not that objective is supposed to be uh, 
like congruent with the other objective if, if those two things go together. So I think that will be one of my, uh, like a question that I have, I guess, in response to that clarification, um, because understanding that that is part of the other motion that was also passed, why would not just both initiatives be added as is? Yes, and I think that's the question. Yep, absolutely. Mandy? So um, if we add both as is, we don't include the town council, number one. So if we add both as is, racial equity and social justice gets rid of all of the red that's listed there. And Alicia, you've said you support adding the town council to that one. Um, Pat supports adding the town council. I think a number of us say we should potentially add the town councils. So, um, you know, we either are willing to look at these and change them or we're not at all. Um, and if we are for one, we should be for the other. Um, and so for the one down on personal personnel management, one of the things I would say is the motion that passed for that one, because in drafting these, I had to look up those motions, were not was not foster a proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments. That's not what that motion said. That motion was, in, was working with the PD and only the PD to foster an anti-racist culture in the PD. And so if we don't change that motion, we don't even talk about an anti-racist culture in the entire town. And I am i can't do that. I think we need an anti-racist culture in the entire town, which by itself requires changing that November 14th motion for this, this town manager performance goal. And so um, I think it's appropriate to modify language that was passed um, at when it when inserting it or working on inserting stuff into town manager performance goals to make those goals more inclusive. Um, all town departments is certainly more inclusive. It's certainly, I believe, what our council would like to work towards. And so I don't, I, 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 I basically would say in, in my ideal world, I would delete both phrases of starting with the public safety departments. I would just say throughout all town departments under personnel, man personnel management, and I would say just employees under racial equity and social justice. But I don't think that would pass. And so I see this language that Pat and I believe Anika and some others have come up with and suggested and requested as a compromise between where I stand of we need it for everyone and where Alicia and some others stand of, we only should be doing the police department first um, because we need to include everyone. Anika. Thank you. Um, so thank you for all the comments. Just to clarify and, and thank you, Mandy. Like my lens is not necessarily um, for the sake of, of compromising or, you know, any of the reasons that were brought up um, within public comment. Uh, my reason for this is just thinking about expanding uh, the impact that we can make. I mean, number one, we have departments that, you know, all over this town that to this day do not have a person of color in them, have never for decades, um, have just recently, we've seen directors of color come in position. So we do have entire departments that just by nature and for decades and since inception have not been used to working with people of color and taking direction. And if we do not expand this, we're not listening to our staff you know, who have in many departments asked for this. Um, I do understand, yes, I don't think that there's a person here that doesn't understand the inception of the police. And if you do not, there is so much information to learn. However, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you all today if I'd listened to, um, I'm not going to name the medical facility in Amherst, Massachusetts, but um, I wouldn't be here today had I listened to them. And I think that while I've had experience with our EMS and EMTs, it has been life-saving to me. 
Um, health disparities within people of color are rampant. They have increased dramatically. Um, this was already the case. This has increased dramatically over COVID. And I think this is an opportunity where I had, again, a positive, very positive experience with our EMTs. There are also eyes and voices to see in this, um, you know, in transition, especially when it comes to Black community and people of color. Um, you know, I've walked my entire life, you know, as, as BIPOC, I represent the, the B and the I that did. And um, I, you know, walking through um, the town and life in general, this is not just uh, applied to um, the police department. Um, and within the police department, I think that it's clear is that they do have ongoing training. And it's not to say that anyone can have enough. Um, and ever have enough, but this is going on. And then we have new departments, like for instance, Crest, that have the least amount of training um, in comparison. So I think evening this out across the board and applying, like if we're going to be a part of implementing an anti-racist culture, which yes, trainings have the potential to do, um, this, why are we limiting this and why are we not placing this, you know, to everyone? It doesn't mean that the police cannot be included. And it doesn't mean like, really, if you, if you think about it, it doesn't mean they're not leading. In many ways, they are already leading um, when it comes to the work that they're doing. And so I just, you know, those were my comments in, in terms of just expanding um, the potential impact that the training could have for the entire community. Thank you, Anika. And Anika, just to clarify, are so you su are suggesting the expansion on both number four in the racial equity and social justice and number five in the personnel management? Well, I was speaking, um, I think my hand may have gone up too early. I was speaking specifically to personnel management. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Alicia? Um, thank you, Michelle. Um, I just wanted to clarify very quickly something Mandy Jo said in terms of me just wanting it to happen at the PD, which is very not true. Um, I just think, again, for reasons that I've stated multiple times in other meetings, that this is an imperative first step. Um, not that, that this should not happen across town. That's not something I believe. Um, also, um, I believe adding people, like people, departments, what have you, to an initiative is not the same thing as completely changing what the initiative is itself. And so that is my issue. So when Mandy Joe said, like, you know, adding the town council is changing the motion. No, it is not. Changing the motion itself is changing the motion. Adding more people and more departments to one motion is not necessarily changing the motion. This itself is not the motion that I proposed that passed through the council. And I do not see this happen regularly that we go and edit things that have already passed through the council. I have not seen that happen to any other thing. So I am confused about those statements first and foremost. Also, um, there's, I just still think there's some confusion as to what anti-racism training is and what my uh, intentions with this motion were and still are. Um, and to be very clear, anti-racism is not adding people of color to departments. And just because a person of color works within a department does not at all mean that that department is anti-racist. So just diversifying our departments, while I agree with that, and I think that is great, that is not what I am focusing on right this minute. Um, and so I think that is the trouble with what is happening here. While I don't think anything specifically of what anyone said is a negative thing, I think this is becoming way far too complicated and diluted. And so what I think is happening here is that we would like to see this happen across town. This cannot actively happen across all departments and be monitored and be tracked at the same time. If that is going to happen, then how are we going to happen? How is that going to happen? And is that going to be the job of the DEI director? to monitor, like there's so much more that would have to go into the conversation for something like that to happen. I don't think just simply adding and adding and adding people on to the initiative makes sense. Um, second of all, the motion that I proposed said for the town manager to work with the PD to identify steps 
So I'm not even just talking about anti-racism training. If we want to have anti-racism tra training across all towns as a part of whatever training package they already get, or if we're just adding a training, I think most departments have trainings on some sort of regular basis, adding an anti-racism training, that's great. That is so simple. And that is not what I'm talking about. Again, anti-racism work is ongoing. It's not just a training. And to make to foster a department that has a proactively anti-racist culture is not to go take a training and then come back and continue work or business as usual. It is then to use the trainings and whatever education you are getting on anti-racism to then use that as a reflection to the work that you're doing to make changes within your work and the environment, the protocols, the policies, whatever have you that the department would identify itself. That is the part of the documenting the process that I was referring to in the motion that would then help to change the culture in certain departments. And so it's not just this act of having anti-racism training, again, which I think is great, but that's not what I was trying to get to with this motion. And so I think all of these different ideas, which are great ideas, are trying to get snowballed into this one idea which I, does, I don't think does justice to any of these initiatives. And again, when we say the town manager is overloaded and he has so many things to do and look at all these things he's working on, why would we oversee a, the whole entire town and all of the departments doing this at the same time? Why would that be the answer to adding this rather than identifying where the most profound impact can be had and starting there? And then that way that can facilitate the process and maybe even start serve as a, a, a footprint per se, for the other departments to follow. Thank you, Alicia. Mandy? A couple of things. Um, first, I want to apologize to Alicia. My wording must not have been very good. I did not mean to intend that you don't want to see an anti-racist, proactive, a proactive anti-racist culture in all the town departments. That was not what I intended to imply. Um, but that your motion started only with the police. And that motion actually was not to foster a proactive um, anti-racist culture. So if we're talking about your motion specifically from November 14th, number five would read, to assist the APD in building upon current efforts and identifying steps to develop a proactive anti-racist culture in the APD and that it be documented and regular updates be provided to the council. It wouldn't have anything to do with any of the other town departments because that's not what your motion said. Your motion was focused specifically on APD. And so if you're insisting on keeping your motion and not changing any of the wording, number five will not refer to all town departments at all, because that's not what the November 14th motion said. It didn't refer to all town departments with a start with the APD. It said, assist the APD in building upon current efforts and identifying steps to develop a proactive anti-racist culture. Number five right now, as worded here, says foster a proactive anti-racist culture throughout all town departments. So in some sense, it's expanding upon your motion in, in a way I look at to say it's even better than your motion because it expands it to all town departments and it says we're going to foster that anti proactive anti-racist culture, not just identify steps to develop a proactive anti-racist culture. We're going to foster it. So I see it as a stronger wording than anything the November 14th motion said. Um, and then we take that and say, you know, it, this is where I've struggled with because I would like our DEI department to determine which department we should start with. But, but that's where I get to the compromise between stopping at all town departments and, um, Councillor Walker's desire to just list it as police and say, well, let's talk, let's start with all public safety departments because they all go into homes. They all have the ability to affect people's health um, and life and death situations when they're, especially fire and EMS, when they're responding to life and death situations. And so um, I, I think this language in number five is, for personnel management is, is 
the best 13 counselors can get to given motions that have been passed, given where 13 different opinions are, um, and that expands on the November 14th motion that did pass this council. Okay. Um, so it's 1115 and most of the GOL members have indicated they need to leave by 1120. I need to leave by 1125. Um, so Lynn, um, I do not believe that we're going to get through this matter today. I don't believe we're going to be able to get back to the climate justice uh, or excuse me, climate action um, or through the rest of the items that we have here to deal with. Um, so I'm looking to you um, to see what you recommend. Hi, sorry, I had trouble unmuting. Um, I would recommend that the uh, GOL forward the goals to the extent that you can resolve the ones that you have discussed and leave open the others and we'll take it up at the council meeting. I have said this consistently. It is unfair to the town manager and his staff to not adopt these goals at the very beginning of January at the latest. Okay. okay. Okay, so we will not come out with a recommendation. We will set aside the items that haven't been um, <clears throat> agreed upon, and those will be discussed on Monday at the council meeting, um, but all of the other items. Would you like us to have a motion for the items that we have come to consensus on or that there is agreement upon um, and exclude the items that have not yet been completed in that motion? I think you could say you that um, boy, um, I think you should recommend that the uh, GOL forward the town manager's goals as they presently stand and include in it the identification of where there's further discussion needed. Excellent. Okay, thank it you. Will not, uh, clearly, it will not be on the consent agenda. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. Definitely um, not. <laughs> no. Okay, thank okay. you. Nope. Yeah, thanks a lot, Lynn. Thank you. Um, okay, so I see um, that uh, I wanted to come back to Alicia to respond to, to Mandy because they were, and then I see Anika's hand is raised um, and Pam's hand, hand is raised. Um, and then we will end discussion. We'll make that motion, and um, and we will we we'll close out the meeting. So Alicia, and then Anika, and Pam. Um, thank you, Michelle. I will shorten my comments to just two two responses that I had to Mandy Joe, and one of them being, how do you think one would foster an anti racist department without identifying the steps that need to be taken? Um, and so to me, that that is the point of the motion that I said, you identify the steps. Yes, the thought is then that those steps are carried out. If you don't have the steps identified, how do you then foster that environment? Um, so I, I, again, stand very strong by the original motion that I proposed. Um, and I understand that some counselors may feel more comfortable with the DEI determining which department goes first. However, this is a motion that has already passed. Um, and I'm feeling slightly I mean, to be completely honest, I'm feeling very frustrated with the pushback on this initiative that has already passed when there are plenty of council initiatives that I have not agreed with personally that are in this document here, but that have passed the council. And so I'm not spending my time arguing things that I don't personally agree with that have already passed on the council. And I feel like it's completely disrespectful as you know, was said before to me and my initiatives and the things that I'm bringing forward on the council. Um, I understand that I don't expect for all 13 counselors with very different life experiences and different views to agree, but something that has already passed should be respected by the council. Um, and that is how I'm feeling right now. So thank you, Michelle, for giving me another moment to speak and opening the GOL meeting to all counselors. 
Absolutely. And I will speak more to this on Monday, but I want to strongly, strongly support Alicia in this. I think that we passed a motion. Um, I think that we're talking about two different things here in racial equity and social justice and personnel management. I'm very comfortable um, under the racial equity and social justice, including their departments. And I don't think that means we can't include other town departments by saying that we're going to begin with the APD. And um, I think that it would really undermine um, our process um, if we were not to include that. And I would even go as far as saying that I think including the language from the motion specifically as number five would be um, a very, very uh, solid way to, to do this. Um, but I, I think we'll have more time to discuss this on Monday. Um, Anika? Uh, yes, yeah. so um, I'm sorry that you um, feel disrespected. Um, Alicia, that's certainly not my intention. Um, I do not see this as um, editing, so to speak, taking out anything uh, from your motion, I think, but, you know, we are a group of 13 here, and I think this is really just asking for ex expansion and also seeing others, um, but I wanted to just um, clarify if um, there was a misunderstanding for what I said. Um, when I'm talking about um, the town town departments and being some of the some of them which have no staff members of color some who have recently had that addition i'm not talking about that as that's it being okay check off boxes i'm talking about just within cultures that have not um included people of color within departments that haven't and now you have people there um we have received comments within staff that have have been within departments that you know um talk about the culture that they're in. And so I think for us not to ensure that this training is going on there, um, I mean, I think we see consistently across the board when being, ex you know, being experienced or um, dealing with the people of color for the first time, you know, I think we can see how that can, can go awry, you know, um, and so I think that that, import, that training is important there and consistently across the board to, um, to allow for all staff and through all departments. And I do not see how that has to water down or take away um, from the police department. Thanks, Anika. Pam? Thanks. Kind of a mundane question. Where can we, where will we be able to um, see this document in its present state? Where will it be posted? Lynn? Um, as soon as we get it, um, Athena and I are working on the finalizing the agenda this afternoon at two, I mean at uh, one, and um, we'll start putting stuff in the packet immediately. Uh, if you would like it in a word version, I can make sure we send that to the full council. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Jennifer? Again, following up. So we, if we want to propose edits, do we just put it into the word document or do we send it to, to Lynn since it's going? It, all amendments that are made during council meetings should be sent to Athena and me no later than noon on the day of the meeting. Um, okay. It's one of the things that we need to reemphasize. Um, so what you should do is send it as an email to Athena and me, and you should say, I, I, will, I would like to propose the following amendment at the meeting. And then that way, Athena can put it up on the screen during the meeting, and uh, we don't have to wrestle with finding the documents. And or, I do, maybe it's for another time, but I do appreciate what Alicia's saying, that it's concerning as a precedent that if the council, a majority of the council votes on a motion that, you know, then it can't be in, included in a document. I just think that that, I don't know when we have that conversation, but that that is 
something that I that is a concerning precedent. Just I, th I think that's a very good conversation for the council to have, and um, that um, and I think that I will stop with that. Okay. Thank you. Um, Kathy, unless it's pressing, I really have to go. Or I, I can turn this over to Anika if, if folks want to stay, but I, I can I have to go. Mine is just a, a quick Mandy and Scribner. There are a few places where ing is still by the verb because you didn't pick it up. So if you can just fix those, I don't want to have to make those edits. Okay, great. So um the mo we need to so. I think Lynn needs to adjourn the council meeting. Um, Lynn. The council meeting is adjourned at 1125. Thank you for taking the time today. This has been a very useful discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks to all the counselors who attended as well. Um, so I have, Mandy, I don't know what you've been working on over there. If you've had a motion working up, I tried to type quickly up what, Lynn suggested, um, which is a motion to forward the town manager goals as they stand to the town council with the following items still open for discussion. Um, the items, I did not fully get that list uh, completed yet. So has anyone else been working on a motion on this as <laughs> we've been talking? And does that motion work? Just- Well, can we see the document so we know what, I just yeah. want to make sure Sure. Yeah, we so, agree on what's still open. Some of, you know, so I can go through some of the things that are still open, um, but I don't have time to review it for all the INGs. I'm trying to do that now. You know, like it depends on if we vote that motion, am I not changing anything, including the language we talked about in the intro that we all agreed needs reworded, but I haven't, I don't have time to reword it during a meeting. Um, and so, and I can't then clean up some of the stuff to accept changes. So it looks, so, you know, I, so I don't know what the best motion is. I really don't. <laughs> do you have time to do that today before you would forward it to the town council? Like the, the items that we've agreed to, like the language and, and things yeah, like that. I would normally clean it up before we send, send it on. Um, okay. But if that motion passes, I can't do any of that cleanup. Why don't we say motion to forward the town council, the town manager goals um, as they stand. Michelle, can I suggest that Please we just do. we just don't have a motion. Yeah, the agree. committee's not making a recommendation right. and right. and I think it's, you know, it can be assumed that without yeah. a recommendation, the council is just going to take it up um, with those edits that have been discussed today. That's excellent. Okay. Any problems with that from GOL members? I think that's best. Okay. Perfect. All righty. Um, so I apologize that we're not getting to many of the other items on our agenda today. Um, our next meeting is, because this was an added meeting. Um, so we haven't adopted a calendar yet. Athena, is our next meeting the 11th? Do you know? I, I have the 18th on my calendar. Okay. All right. So, and at that meeting, we will adopt a calendar um, for going forward. So if there are agenda items um, that you have, um, we are, have pretty much a full agenda, but please send them to me. And I see that Jennifer and Mandy still have their hands. No, up. no, no, no. Oops. Okay. Are there any other comments or questions at this time? All right. Thank you all very much. And I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 11.28 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good job, Chairing. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye.